So the furniture is arranged, and it's time now for our very exciting panel. Uh, we're going to invite to the stage the fabulous Moana Maniapoto, who whakapapas to Ngati Tūwharitoa and Te Arawa. Moana, as you all know, is an award-winning singer and songwriter and documentary maker and journalist and all-round fabulous human, human being who is passionate for Māori and for women and social justice. And she's got one really great shoe and one interesting shoe. Make her very welcome. She's amazing. <laughs> and I also want to invite to join her on the stage our illustrious panel of Ruby, Jacinda, Fatma, and Natalie. Come on. Hi. Ah, ko te, ko te mea tūtahi ka mihi atu au ki a koutou ngā te whātui pohiri mai a tātou katoa, a he honore nui tēnā. Uh, kia hau, uh, nō te waka o te aroa, kia noho i Waingarui a koutou, i Waingarui i enei mana wahine ki te kōrero. Fū, fū, oh, che! <laughs> you know, sport is a microcosm of society, I think. So um, I can back up the fact that um, I want to call it... I was going to call you Priscinda. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. Prime Minister Jacinda. <laughs> it's weird, eh? <laughs> you know when you go back to school and, and you see your teacher and you always called the Miss Kingy, and then they go, no, call me Georgina. It feels funny. <laughs> <laughs> so Priscinda, I saw Pr <laughs> Priscinda was crying at that match. I saw her. She was like, at that first match. It was so amazing, wasn't it? It was, it was absolutely incredible. And it's because it was, it was more than just a game. It's it was. more than just a game. And you know, um, our beautiful Ruby here, who I'm, I'm so thrilled to meet. I'm such a fangirl. Um, you know, we all watched you pop out after the World Cup, Cup and you were so authentic. You were so you. You just, you just like bubbled and we all went, oh my God, I think I love her. And then you went, <laughs> <laughs> and we all went, oh man. <laughs> I mean, you brought what I think is your authentic self to the occasion. Was it ever going to be any different? Oh, look, I think growing up in Aotearoa, that's a huge part of our identity. And I, I've said it before in interviews, we do that all over the world after we play. And that's how you find where the Kiwis are, because there's like six Owas in like Amsterdam <laughs> or wherever we are. But that night, hey, there were 40, 50,000 Owas. So it was, um, it was a moment, not just for me, not just for the Black Ferns Fano, but for our whole country. It was, was a beautiful moment. Beautiful. <laughs> this, be this beautiful wahine tour here. Isn't she gorgeous? Uh, <laughs> Natalie, you, you're, uh, I mean, my daughter was, you know, she just was like blown away meeting you. You're, so, you're such an icon in acting, but also off the stage. And I wonder how difficult it is as an actor to be your authentic self when there's a lot of expectation like, girl, stay in your lane. You're an actor. Zip mm. it. That's true. That's true. A lot of people want, it, want you to be in your box, but I think it's similar to what I think both of you were saying earlier about, you know, when people hold you up on a pedestal, you want to be able to make mistakes and you want to be able to, I, I, I know so many people who want to step forward and be advocates for, or activists, but they say, oh, but there's this thing I did 10 years ago that I'm embarrassed someone will say, but it's not in line with your values or there's this aspect of my life that doesn't match up exactly, that I can't be perfect, and none of us are, and, and we still have to fight for what we care about. We still have to come out and speak for what we, um, what we want to change in the world, even if you know, not every aspect aligns with that, you know. Fatma, I have heard so many fabulous things about you. You're a wahine tool, which means a warrior woman here. And, and being the first wahi uh, woman um, uh, Muslim, Salam Alaikum, um, African, that is, that is a big deal. That is a big deal. How much pressure um, was on you? How, how did those expectations land on you that you, you suddenly got to tick the box for everything? Uh, well, thank you, Mona. I think, uh, kia ora, everyone. Uh, yeah. Tina koto, tina koto, tina koto. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> you can start to yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> well, I think the, as you rightly mentioned, the expectation was very high because uh, when I uh, was um, appointed um, in, uh, in May in 2016, uh, the reputation of FIFA was quite bad. Um, an organization that was supposed to be giving joy to, to people was described almost as a criminal organization by the Department of Justice, so the US Department of Justice. But you know, when you arrive at the time where all the um, lights are red, you can only do better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when the bars are the, low. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could only do better. And definitely uh, being somebody outside, I don't think that my gender was a problem or my religion or, or even the color of my skin. But the fact that I was an outsider of the, in the world of mm. football was the biggest challenge. The first thing I did was definitely to meet the staff and to see how good and how, more, how low their moral was. And uh, what struck me really was that the first meeting I had with the staff, a gentleman, a long-serving uh, FIFA official told me, you know, Madam, we cannot wear this suit with the FIFA logo anymore in the public transportation in Zurich people will literally insult us and abuse us because of the bad things that happen in the company. Mm. So um, the journey has been, um, has been a very bumpy one, but a very exciting one. Why did you choose sport as a platform for the kind of, um, I guess, the, the... Yeah, why did you choose? Well, you could have chosen anything. Yes, it was a very unexpected choice for me. I am no athlete myself at all, very far from it. Um, but I, I was reading um, an article by Noah Harari, Yuval Noah Harari, um, and he was writing about how when you don't have a lot of power, the best way to make change is theater, like make a spectacle. And sport is such a spectacle, and to have those women be extraordinary on such a grand stage accelerates the conversation so quickly. And um, that's, that's what made me interested in it. And seeing it was the influence of the last Women's World Cup and seeing my son watching it, who was seven years old then, he's 12 now, so I guess he was eight then. Um, but watching him and seeing how he idolized these female athletes the same way he wanted a Rapino jersey, the same way he wanted a Messi jersey, it was exactly the same. Yeah. In his mind, there was no difference and it was my bias that I was surprised by that. Mm. Um, and then I was like, this is culture changing. This, this changes a generation in a heartbeat, you know? Mm. And I just wonder, um, Ruby, when you were growing up, uh, you know, before you really got into rugby and all that, did you look at did you look at life through the lens of like this is this is what wahine do, this is what men do, or did you look at it through a different cultural kind of a lens? What, what were you looking at? Yeah, no, I think um, like a lot of people my age, it was silver ferns. I still love the silver ferns, but for the wahine or the girls or the women, it was netball, and for the boys, it was rugby. And I have a very distinct memory in the lounge of 44 Strathmore, my grandman's home of all the cousins stood up and did the haka and all the all the boys were doing the haka and I was at the back just like and I'm the only afakasi so I was the only anko one doing it but <laughs> I remember thinking this is the only time I'm ever going to get to do the haka because I don't see any woman playing rugby I don't see any woman on the sports channels it's just here in the lounge that I get to be the superhero like my cousins and mm. like my family and so I guess it's been a huge driver for me Mm. Absolutely. You, we need to see it. Like, honestly, sometimes after training, I don't want to go down. I love I love Sky Sport and the support, but sometimes I don't want to have to, after training, shower, go dress up, get on the TV, do the thing, come in, and then another training. But I know how important it is to visually see it. Mm. And I, I need to touch on Nat's point of the, the, I have to hold it together because it is my bias. I have, we have, um, you know, young girls coming up, you've got the grandparents, you've got the parents who I'd want to give a big mahi out to parents, bringing your kids to our games means so, so much to us. I have little girls come. I think Lucia's here tonight. Shout out, Lucia, my mate. What's up, mate? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's the young boys. Hmm. There are so many young boys. I have lost count, and they are the most 
the most people who wait and get us to sign, mm. have our tops, have want selfies and all these videos. It's young boys. Yes. Mm. And I get so excited in my heart and I have to kind of be like, yeah, what's up, bro? Yeah, cool, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Inside, I'm nearly gungy, like I'm yeah, nearly yeah. tearing up because you know, it's... Tangi wet away, mate. No, oh, mate. <laughs> so it's, it's actually these young boys and I think, Imagine when they're all blacks. Hmm. Mm. I'll buy you. Fatma, and growing up in, in Senegal, what, what, what were the kind of issues that you, how did you, your, your world would have been different from the world that we grew up here in Aotearoa in terms of looking at race issues or gender issues. What was it like for you? Well, for, for us, uh, we have, um, we are a country that is um, dominated by, uh, by um, Muslim. 90% of the Senegalese population is Muslim. But the good thing is that our first president was Christian. His wife was Christian. Our second democratically elected president was uh, Muslim. His wife was Christian. Mm. Our third uh, president, the, the, the one that is now ruling the country, that's the first time in the history of Senegal that we have a couple that is fully Muslim leading the country. So it's a very uh, uh, moderate Islam in Senegal. This is number one. And Senegal is not an Islamic country, it's a secular country. And uh, because also we were a former French colony, most of our constitution is based on the code Napoleon, the Napoleon code. So meaning that in terms of access to school, normally everybody should have equal as aspect. But yet, in a, in a, in a, in a Muslim society, uh, the women are less expected to be studying, to be going to school. It's as simple as that. I only realized that uh, my gender was a problem at two occasions. When it, I really wanted to play football, I could not. And when I wanted to go dancing in the evening without a chaperone, I could not go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think that's kind of how we roll here sometimes, eh? <laughs> Natalie, people talk about the glass ceiling, that women are, are breaking the glass ceiling. <laughs> There's a lot of women that still are outside. They're not in the room. You know, how do you, how do you work on, on, on um, City Angels and, and the, the stuff that you do to, to transform it? Oh, that's such a, good, um, such a good question. It was really incredible when we, I, I got to Angel City uh, from Time's Up. Time's Up was a women's movement in Hollywood that came out around all of Me Too allegations. And the incredible thing with that was that we were joined with other uh, women's movements in the United States, so the Farm Workers Union, the Restaurant Workers Union, mm -hmm. the Caregivers Union, um, medical workers, um, we all, tech, journalism, um, we, we all gathered and it was so powerful and we learned so much from each other. Um, and I remember uh, the head of the Farm Workers Union, Monica Ramirez said, she said, you know, they tell us, shut up, no one cares because you're in the shadows and they tell you actresses, shut up, no one cares because you're so in the spotlight. And they're just telling all of us the same shut thing up. to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. it was a great, um, it was this great unifying um, thing that we all needed to be comfortable using our voice, even if we were very lucky and being like, oh, I shouldn't say anything. I'm so lucky in every other way. Mm. And even if someone says no one cares, you know, but that we all all needed to use our voice. And um, and then also to always ask exactly the question you're asking in every room, who's not in the room? Who's, yeah. Not, yeah. who's not in the conversation? And why aren't we bringing them in? Why yeah. aren't we making sure that they're, they're part of it as well? Because a lot of the, there's, there's been talk around um, that, you know, the notion of role models, which all of us have been, you know, you're a role model, you're the first who did this, and you're the first who did that. That some that that maybe is not the right term that we should be using. That that role models sometimes can legitimise the status quo and say, well, everything's all working. Look at you, girl, you're doing really well. <laughs> Whereas what we need is um, warriors, people who will who will disrupt the system, who will go. I don't think I want to be a cog in that machine. I think I want to change the machine. I think I want to <laughs> tip it all over. What do you think, Jacinda? I think you make it. <laughs> <laughs> Was I the machine? <laughs> I yeah. think you make you make a really good point. I mean, look, we've had and we've been privileged to have had periods in our history where we've had, you know, female governor general, head of the judiciary, um, you know, female speaker in parliament, 
female prime minister, sometimes all at once. <laughs> yeah. And yet, I think every single one of those individuals would have also have been cognizant of the fact that we still have overrepresentation of women experiencing violence, and that we still have overrepresentation of women in low sector paid, uh, uh, sorry, low paid jobs, and we still have a significant pay gap for women. So we have to be really mindful of the fact that having women in those jobs that, as you describe, being role models in these, you know, sometimes simultaneously, does not mean that we have lifted every woman out of the circumstances that they should not be experiencing. So it makes, yes, it makes a difference, but you have to use your voice in those roles to keep making that change. And remember that until every woman is free from an experience uh, that isn't forced upon them because of their gender, we have not achieved what we are seeking. Mm. Okay. Hey, uh, I, I was gonna, yeah. It was crack up because I was lucky enough. I've just been in the States on a sabbatical when I went to an Angel City game. Did you? The States do sports well, right? I yeah, love they're sports. quite flesh. Yeah, yeah, they're all right, they're all right. And I go to, I go to Natalie behind the stage and go, oh man, you, you know, you got the soccer team. You must have been, grew up in sports. And she was like, no, I didn't do any sports. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I did. <laughs> I wish I did. I'm sure you'd be unreal. Be gym, yeah, gymnast. Yeah, maybe half tiny. Yeah, <laughs> <something like that. laughs> um, no, but I, I think, you know, to that point, just because she didn't grow up in sports, she's making huge change in sports. Mm. And I sat there at that game. You know, they sell out their home stadium week in and week out. People bloody parachuting down, holding a flare. But they're very, you know, they do that in the I States, was, eh? I, I, it was just such an experience, not even the football, and I'm sitting in this lounger. They had cup holders in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> like business and class. Then, and then these ladies like come up to you class. and go, are you hungry? <laughs> are you I was like, whoa. And they, they were selling tickets to people to sit right next to the bench. And so people were like, you know, if they did a bad pass, they were hurling abuse at the bench. And I was thinking, oh, would I, do I want that? You know, <laughs> do we want to have that level of entertainment? But it was such an eye-opening experience. And without people like Natalie Portman reaching outside of their comfort zone, how would that happen? Mm. Oh, thank you. you. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. mate. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you're pretty out. So. <laughs> you got any, any little, uh, anything that you'd like to share well, with her? What's, yeah, what's I, you got in, in there, girl? Well, it's far, we're in New Zealand, right? We're in New Zealand and I go into schools and to the to the point of um Prasinda over here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, we we're trying to lift everyone up and I do want to just touch on New Zealand, especially within the Wahine circles, it is important, even if it feels awkward to to toko your sis. Mm. You know, lift each other up and I you know, I went into the school and um, took an Olympic medal or something, and um, you know, <laughs> and I took, no, but it's, no, 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 but it's funny because everyone's like, oh, Olympic medal, and I sit next down to this kid, and he goes, what are you, what are you doing here? And this other, kid, he was like, what are you doing here? These kids, I was like, oh, I'm just um, coming in to talk to your class about the Olympics, and they're like, did you bring that medal in? And I was like, yeah, I did, you know, and then they turn around like, what a show off. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, so in New Zealand, so sometimes, oh. we, and I, I honestly was like, M you're right. You guys are, you're all right. I just came in here, but I just don't talk to everybody to, you know, sometimes it's a little bit of a show off. But I, I challenged Natalie Portman, you know, she didn't grow up playing sports. She's changed the sports world and she's tried on many, many different outfits in Beautiful Hollywood. Outfits. But there's one outfit I've got to ask one you outfit. have you tried on? Mm. An Olympic gold medal. <gasps> May oh, I? Wow. May I? What's happening? May I? Oh. Wow. <laughs> it's heavy. It's heavy. <laughs> what? Thank you for being such an awesome sport. <laughs> 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 Thank you. This is so that beautiful? I mean, oh my god. Wild. This is the coolest <laughs> thing that's ever happened. Oh, oh my god. You wanted to give it back. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll give it back. I'm like afraid to. I, I, I will be happy with a bronze one. Oh, this <laughs> is... I, got, I don't know what I'm not happy with. How do you get through even though? Oh. oh. Like, oh. That's yeah. very gangster. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> how do you. How do you Oh, you've told us how you keep your feet on the ground because it's easy to get if you, you know. I literally didn't know they were in there. <laughs> <laughs> how okay. Do you, how do you keep? I've got to give this back. Can you just carry no, this around? Can you show it? Can you show it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's so amazing, <laughs> right? I used to have it. It's heavy, bro. Yeah. It could knock someone out for real. 
Picture! <laughs> oh, here you are, take it. I know. Yeah, this is, yeah. So, oh my god, that's so cool. That's so nice. Oh god, I'm gonna have to go. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it's him. Honestly. Oh. Five hours around your neck. You're so neat. Oh, Gee, that's oh, heavy, eh? Oh. Beautiful. Oh my god. Yeah. Hey, um, um, you, you've talked about keeping the ego. New Zealand is fantastic like that. I eh? love it, hey, just, honestly. You know, you just can't get. You can't <laughs> even if you were describing oh. stadiums and the events <laughs> and the experience in the US, and I was thinking, when we were found out we were hosting the you know FIFA Women's World Cup, third biggest sporting event in the world, the government's like, well, we'll put in some money and fix the toilets. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. That's literally what we did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we fixed it over. Yeah. Hey. One step at a time, guys. Right. Just quietly, it's very yeah. important. It's yeah, very absolutely. Important. Yeah. I, I visited all of them, they've been fixed. <laughs> no yeah. Jacinda, how, how have you kept your feet on the ground? Because sure, you've got a lot of, you know, flack and, and, and negative stuff, but. I, I know that it must be uncomfortable sometimes being somewhat, I hate you, I don't mean it disrespectfully, but you know, deified in some ways, like kind of held up there. Oh. How, do you, how do you cope with that? Well, that, that doesn't happen in New Zealand. So <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry about that too much. Do you know, and that's, and that's, I would not change that for the world, that we have such proximity to our leaders in New Zealand that, you know, I remember once being in the supermarket and I was just staring blankly at the muesli bars um, <laughs> when someone came over and said, look, I'm so sorry. Can I talk to you about the civilianization of the military in New Zealand? <laughs> 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 and so you're just, you're just constantly engaging with people, yeah, yeah. like the keeping it bars. real in the muesli yeah. bars. Um, yeah. And I wouldn't change that for the world. Yeah. So <laughs> I wouldn't. And people keep it real. They yeah, do. They keep it real. Keep it real, old, old turtle. What about when you're a Hollywood star? Do you like want to go out and just like not have any mascara on and just like... I just want to slob around. Do you do that? Most of the time. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. How do you, how do you keep your well-being well? How do you, how do you look after yourself? Um, that's a great question. Um, well, I like to walk in nature, and today I had a gorgeous walk here. Luckily, this amazing country. Yeah? Yeah. We've got a lot of walks. We've got a lot of people who'd probably like to escort you on nice <laughs> long walks. I'm open for suggestions. <laughs> I want to know what, what is going to drive you, Batma, to be a good ancestor? What is the next thing you're going to do? The next thing I'm going to do and, um, is to make sure that racism is rooted out of football. Oh, <laughs> That is going to keep you busy. And, and if I have to go to the pop, I will go. Go to the where? The pop. Pop Francois. Oh. <laughs> to, to, to have a co coalition led by the pop to Kyoto. fight racism in football, I will be more than happy to leave. Mm -hmm. Kia ora. Kia ora, Fatma. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jacinda, <laughs> um, what... What are, you, what are you most passionate about now and what drives you to be a good ancestor? How are you going to be a good ancestor? Mm. It's, a good, it's a good question. And, and there's so many things I could list, but instead I'll just share one thing I heard Marilyn Waring say once. Uh, she was a politician in the, in the National Party when amazing. there were very few women in politics. And I heard her once say there are two types of women in this world. There are those who fight so hard to get in the room that once they get through that door, they pull it closed behind them. And there are those who fight so hard that once they get through, they ram their foot into that door and pull as many as they can. So, I just, That's beautiful. I just want to be that person for as long as I can. That's a good ancestor. That's a good ancestor. <laughs> Kia ora, Natalie. What? What are you passionate about now? What, do you, what, are, what is going to drive you for your children, for your circles, and so you can be a good ancestor? What, what, what's going to do it for you? That's such a big question. Um, I know. It's a big one. Sorry. <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's, it's a great question. Um, hopefully many things. Um, but the, what I mentioned before about 
uh, wage segregation is sort of what I'm, I'm really curious about as kind of like the next world I'm, I'm, I, I, I hope to mm. affect. Kia ora. And, and on behalf of all of us, thank you, thank you for joining us, you and, and Fatma. It's absolutely stunning. You're both fabulous wahi netoa. Ah, oh, thank Warrior you. Warrior woman. Kia ora. I, I want to hang out with the Kiwis all the oh, time. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah, yeah. Best, best crowd. Oh, yeah. No, we've all got fuddy around here. It's all sweet air. <laughs> oh, I love being a okay, Kiwi. Okay, yeah. Ruby. What, what are you, what's your passion? What, what are you angry about? And what are you going to fight for? I know you're a fighter. <laughs> you are. Yeah, kia ora whaia. Thank you, everybody who's um, shared the space today. It's, it's been beautiful. I feel like I'm one of those, on one of those top ten podcasts or something, eh? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's funny you mentioned ancestors fire because tipuna is something... I, I always try and remember the saying, you are the descendant that your ancestors prayed for. Beautiful. I it's always try, I try, I really try and remember that, even in our darkest days. And, you know, we're all out here trying to inspire the world, but I think I would make them the most proud if I could look in the mirror and inspire myself. Kia ora. Tēnā koe. Tēnā koe. I am... Uh, I'm, I'm, so, um, I'm so grateful to um, Anne and her crew for inviting me to be a part of this. And, and when I saw um, our former Prime Minister at um, that first football match... I said, hey, I'm going to cheer this thing that you're at. You're talking at. Prasinda? <laughs> <laughs> right, Honourable Prasinda. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I said, she goes, have you met Fatma? I said, no. She goes, oh, she's flash. I said, <laughs> yeah. I said apparently Ruby Tui and Natalie Portman are on there. She goes... Oh my God, it's such a flash panel. I said, <laughs> I said you're no slouch yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So on behalf of all of us, I just want to thank these wonderful women and we're going to finish off with a bit of a wayata. Yeah. And what we're going to do, <laughs> look, look, it's gone so over time, we might as well stay over. Oh, no, it has, hey, that's flashing, <laughs> fam. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get you all to stand up and we're going to sing a song. You'll all know this one, okay? You ready? Going to bring our crew on. Go for it, Go for it. Okay, you ready? Ready to rock? Are we good? To te ra mai ngā iwi Owe Tato, tato e To te ra mai Thank <laughs> you.